This is Matthew McConaughey. Natalie Portman. James Patterson. Michael Ian Black. And you are listening to Five Questions with Dan Chabell. Ryan Serhant, welcome to Five Questions. So happy to have you back. You were in episode two. A lot has changed for you over the past two years. During our last conversation for this podcast, you shared your vision of the future of your industry, which you recently brought to life with your new company, Serhant. What was your process of turning this vision into a reality? Um, well, thank you for having me back. It is exciting to be here. Uh, a big part of turning the vision into reality was honestly just to pick up a pen, pick up a piece of paper, and start writing down logistically how I would actually start a company. And I had the time to do that once we went into quarantine earlier this year. You know, it's, it's something that I was kind of putting off and putting off just because we get so busy, um, uh, you know, here in New York. And then when I couldn't stay in New York, we went to New Hampshire um, because everything got shut down. I said, you know what? There's no better time to start this thing than right now because no one else is going to start anything right now, especially in New York City. So let's figure it out. And I got my immediate team together and just really, I, 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 we just wrote down everything we needed to do to start a company, like legal. Okay, under legal, what kind of documents and agreements do we need to have? What type of attorneys do we need to work with? Okay, marketing, under marketing, what type of pamphlets do we need to have? Brochures do we need to have? Booklets do we need to have? You know, digital. So we, we went through it, you know, um, uh, and mapped it all out on these huge pieces of paper. And by September, we had a business. I love that. And I can relate to what you've done because what you really have done with your company is you've assimilated all your skills and you know, all the things that you've done in the past into your own brand. You know, like, you know, the real estate market. So there's the brokerage. Like you really yeah. know how to, you know, do reality TV. You've been in a big time Bravo show, multiple actually. And you create your own videos for YouTube and Instagram. So you already have a lot of these skills and resources and employees intact to help you build this new modern real estate company. Yeah. And that was a big part of it. You know, I, I was a broker. It's not like part another... of Sirhan is a restaurant. <laughs> like it Correct. is under, it's under your umbrella of what you've done throughout your career. That's built up into this point that has enabled you to pull it off. Yeah, the, the media supports the brokerage and the brokerage supports the online learning, right? The training. Um, and those are really kind of our three pillars and they just loop back and forth and back and forth and back and forth. Um, uh, and it's worked well. And it just made sense to pull all of my different kind of uh, businesses under one umbrella and to the benefit of other agents and to the benefit of our clients. In your book, you describe big money energy as having self-confidence. How can someone overcome the self-doubt that is preventing them from realizing their true potential? Oh, man, there's, there's so many things. I mean, that's, that's really that's, that question is what the book sets out to answer. Um, and I, I think a lot of it stems with not having a good sense of self. I think so many people um, are obsessed with, with others, right? They, they, they want to emulate other people instead of being the best versions of themselves because being the best version of themselves is really, really scary because it's unknown territory, right? It's uncharted waters. You don't have a map for who the best version of yourself is. What do I do? So you look to other people who are successful and you say, oh, okay, I, I'll just do that. I'll dress like them. I'll talk like them. And then you end up being inauthentic. Um, and that's where people get tripped up because it can never last, right? It's like a, it's like a gym membership after January 1st, right? Like you, you see other people who are, who are fit. So, you, okay, they go to the gym. So I'm going to go to the gym and I'm going to do it. But that's not what it is. You know, it's, it's about going back to that healthy lifestyle. So I think it needs to start um, uh, with a self audit, right? And um, the way I did it anyway, back in 2009, so 11 years ago, um, when I first got into the real estate business in New York and had no self confidence and, you know, kind of no sense of self-worth in the business. Cause I thought I was just a kid running around in a big boys business, which was, which was kind of true. Um, I really wrote down everything I liked about myself and everything I didn't like about myself. Um, you know, what do I think I'm good at? What do I think I'm bad at? 
um, and really kind of do uh, my own personal analysis that way. And then I went to a couple of different friends and I said, Hey, what do you, what do you know me for? Like when you say, Hey, I'm friends with Ryan, what do you, what do you say? Um, and that was a real weird eye opener. Um, uh, you know, and, uh, you know, and asking them too, like, what do you think my strengths and weaknesses are? Um, so, you know, to start that foundational, um, building for, for kind of creating your own sense of self-confidence, it starts with doing your own self audit and then asking others, uh, you know, what you're good at, what you're bad at, and then writing it all down and building out your own version of future you that you want to be in 12 to 24 months. Um, uh, and then from there, then you start putting in the work. I love that's that. what it starts with. Yeah. And it reminds me of my conversation with Matthew McConaughey on an earlier episode of the podcast where he was going to law school and then someone said, Hey, you might want to try acting. You, ha- you seem like you have some of, the, of that personality and, and acting chops. And he went in a yeah. whole different direction and became what he is today. So sometimes it either happens organically or sometimes you have to be more thoughtful and strategic about who you're talking to. And really, like I like what you said, like just push them to be honest because a lot of people, especially your friends and family, want to, want to tell you what you want to hear. And so you really want yeah. to get that out of them because that can give you a better sense of maybe what your strengths and, and interests are because – as you know, some of this big energy flows from connecting who you are with what you do. Like if you're on a sales call, Ryan, or you're talking to one of your clients, it, it's natural. Like it's not forced. Like yep. I get to sell this product I don't believe in. Like you're selling yourself mm-hmm. and, you know, a house, for instance, that you really like and really think is a good deal. Right. So if you're, yep. if you can't sell yourself on something first or you can't convince yourself of something, you're not going to be able to do that with someone else. Agreed, hundred percent. Who are some of your idols and mentors that have the energy that you've inspired that have inspired you to think bigger and work harder? Um, that's a great question. You know, I I, I look to a lot of different people. Um, you know, there there are people in my business that you wouldn't know. There's you know developers in my business. Um, uh, you know, I, I look to also big name visionaries like Elon Musk, right? Who, you know, I hear him talk like, man, that if, if my brain could only work that way, right? And his level of, of energy um, is really, really, really inspiring, you know, and the fact that he must do so many things and how does he even manage that? And he has 20,000 employees and, you know, it, it makes everything seem very, very relative. And I also look to people like my dad who, you know, ran a big business, did it with a certain level of calm, uh, and, you know, confidence and conviction um, and, you know, woke up every single day at 4 a.m. and went to work because that was the job, not because he was excited to do that, but because that was the job and that brought him joy and he knew it was best for his family. Like that was a you know light bulb moment for me when I, I realized that he made choices every day that were tough um, and that I could make choices too. Um so I think those are two good examples of kind of the, the spectrum of people that I, that I look to and who have influenced me both personally and then, you know, through their writings and through their speaking. I like that you mentioned both because it is a spectrum. And Elon Musk, a lot of people don't consider him high energy, but he can still have big money energy because yes. he knows his, what he's doing. He has his goals in check. He's running multiple companies. He has that degree of confidence and conviction. But the energy isn't like, it's not like your energy when you're on TV or when you're walking in the street, yeah. you talk to anyone, you, you know, people can feel it more and mm-hmm. you can still be successful and have this level of self-confidence, even if you're an introvert. So I think that's a really important point. Yep. And part, part of what I think makes you successful, I kind of call it the like Sir Hand touch, <laughs> but it's your personal and, and intentional approach to connecting with others. Like two examples from our, our relationship is you sending me a copy of your book with a letter and then you showing up to my New York City book launch, right? Can you share another story about how one of your small gestures has led to a big breakthrough for you in your career in life? Um, oh man, let me think about myself for a, for a quick second here. Uh, you know, I, uh, you know, there's, there's a couple, I guess. Um, you know, I, I, I'm big on gifts. 
right? I'm big on gift giving. Uh, you know, as we talk right now, I'm, I'm doing this kind of seven days of giving back uh, right now where we're doing kind of different things every day to give back to people around the world, to, to New Yorkers. And it's as small as, you know, giving away free Metro cards so they can ride the train to just calling up random people and asking them what their holiday wish list is and just paying for it all and, um, you know, paying people's rent and stuff like that. Um, we'll say though that there was a, a client of mine um, who, uh, you know, would always talk about reading, um, and, but never had any books in his, in his office, didn't have a bookshelf, didn't have anything. Um, and you know, every, every broker in the city was always all over him, right? They wanted his projects, they want everything that he does. Everything he builds is amazing. You know, it's a really like a, a, a very, very big, important client to have. And, um, and so I sent him a bookshelf the day after I had my first kind of meeting with him. Um, and then every day thereafter, five days a week for a very, very long time, I sent him a book um, for that bookshelf. And I think it was, I don't know, seven months later or something like that. He just wrote to me and I have this email framed um, uh, because I was, you know, he knew I was trying to pitch for a specific building as was every other broker. Um, and he wrote to me and he said, uh, uh, you win, let's do it. The books can stop now, please. And, um, uh, I don't know. I, I like that story. <laughs> like it's, it's a mixture of kind of giving him something that he had mentioned, uh, mixed with like relentless persistence. Um, uh, and I think he, you know, he definitely took note of that. He's like, if Ryan's able to do this every single day, like he will do whatever it takes to sell my building. And he's the guy to go for. And he'll be getting another book. Maybe come, yeah. come February. Anyway. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. And what's your best piece of career advice? Um, the best piece of a career advice I have, um, is, you know, let me take a step back for a second. You know, I big money energy isn't necessarily about the money. Okay. Um, you know, energy is what propels us forward and energy is attractive. So what I end up selling every day in my business, and I think everybody else in their business, I know you do it when, you know, booking and everything you do with your books, you know, in your speaking career, like you're selling your own energy. People want to buy that. They say, okay, what's your rate for your energy? because that's what I want to give to my people who are going to sit in that auditorium or over the zoom and they're going to listen to it. Same thing for apartments for me. It's, you know, my energy about an apartment is what gets sold and the buyer they're energized about what they're going to be able to do in this home and with their kids and have parties and all that. Um, uh, so the best piece of career advice I ever got was take care of the music and the music will take care of you. Meaning that if you just do the work, don't focus on the money. Don't obsess over the money or the individual deals or all the things that, that can drive you crazy in the sales business. Uh, the work will take care of you. So if you just structure your day, if you stay disciplined, if you wake up every day and you get to work, you make your calls, you meet the people you need to meet, you do your follow-up, you just do it every day, no matter what, you get smacked a thousand times, you get lied to, you lose all your deals the work will take care of you. You're going to be okay. It's, it's when you stop taking care of the music, does the music then eventually stop? Right. And that's when you get in trouble. I love that. Yeah. It's about consistency. It's every day, you know, like mm -hmm. for me, it's a podcast every week. It's a article every week. It's making sure I'm posting on social media every day. So it's, it's just bit by bit, everything builds. And uh, it's hard to just get started yeah. though, because you can't, you only know that after like six months, a year, two years that it all accumulates. Yeah, no, you don't see results in the beginning. Yeah, exactly. And that's why a lot of people quit. So that's why you have to do something you really want because you're less likely to quit. Yeah, exactly. And that's, but that's why I compare it to fitness all the time. Like mm. you, if you want to lose weight, you don't go to the gym for two weeks and all of a sudden you look like you're in a magazine. <laughs> like just, you got to understand, you know, things take time. Uh, it takes persistence, takes consistency. And it's got to be a, uh, an, an entire change, right? You can't just show up at the work and do the work and be busy, um, at, but not actually focus on what type of work you're doing. Then you're someone that just goes to the office all day long. You're uh, busy, 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 but you don't actually do anything. 
You know, you're sitting on the computer and you're just like reading the news all day. It's fine if that's part of your work, but it, it's not going to propel you somewhere. It's not going to get you closer to that future you that you wrote down, that you determined that that's the person you're going to be. Then, then you're just doing work for the sake of doing work. And, and people do that as a big weakness, right? It's, it's, um, it's like analysis paralysis. They get obsessed with thinking things and overthinking and writing blah, 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 without ever actually just doing it, right? Without just starting the work. And I think it's important um, that people need to learn how to take action and stick with it. You know, it's what, what is that quote? It's like 97% of the people who quit end up working for the 3% who didn't something like that. Like that's always stuck in my head. 